So we just saw how to apply various algebraic tricks to obtain representations of functions in terms of power series. What other tricks can we use to be able to do this? Well, turns out you can also differentiate and integrate power series. So we will now discuss how to do that. To this effect, we will have a theorem, which says the following. If the series, say, sum of ck times x minus a to the k, k from 0 to infinity, has the radius of convergence R, and this radius of convergence is positive, then the function given by this power series, so uh, f of x is equal to the sum of the series, so we can write it as, um, well, c0 plus c1 x minus a and so on so this is the sum of our power series here and so this function here is differentiable on the entire interval a minus r a plus r so recall that a is the center of this power series here we have power series centered at the point a and this interval represents the interval of convergence without the endpoints okay, so we do not say anything about the endpoint about the endpoints of the interval of convergence um, and so the differentiability here says that it is also continuous because recall any function that is differentiable must be continuous. So differentiability is a stronger property, it implies continuity. So this function is therefore continuous. So continuity will be useful later when we talk about integration power series. So we want to make sure that sum of power series is integrable and this continuity will give us precisely that. And moreover, not only we know these two things, that the sum of such uh, a power series is nice differentiable continuous function and so on, uh, we can even differentiate and integrate this function. So the, the theorem further tells us that f prime of x can be computed by differentiating the power series term by term. So if you differentiate this term by term, the constant term c0 goes away. This linear term results in c1 after differentiation. This quadratic term after differentiation gives me c2 times 2x minus a and so on. In other words, my series becomes the sum k from 0 to infinity and here I will be differentiating every term in my series. So differentiation of this polynomial using chain rule gives me ck times k x minus a to the power k minus 1. So let me try to squeeze the uh, k minus 1 in here. 
k minus 1. There we go. And so this gives us an explicit way to compute the derivative of a function that is represented by power series. Similarly, we can integrate f, it turns out. So we can compute the integral of f of x dx, and that will be given by the term-by-term -term integral of the series. So first we have the constant term, uh, which uh, is just the constant of integration, uh, plus c0 x minus a. So we, we can put x minus a in here. Um, again, we're basically just shifting the integral of c0 by constant. If need be, we can absorb that constant into the constant of integration here. Plus, uh, here comes the integral of c1 x minus a, so that would be c1 times x minus a squared over 2, and so on. So the resulting series is now term by term integral of this expression here. How do we integrate it term by term? Well, here we have kth power multiplied by a constant. So we keep the constant, then multiply it by the k plus first power of x minus a. So here is k plus 1, and it's divided by k plus 1. So we basically are using uh, u sub to integrate x minus a to the k, and this is the result of this integration. And in fact, this theorem tells us something else pretty useful. It says that in addition, we do not need to be concerned about where these new power series converge because the radii of convergence of these series are equal to R. So this is very useful property. Recall that we start with this power series over here. We do not say anything special about it except that it must converge on something that's bigger than a single point. Right? And then we talk about the function that corresponds to this power series. And it turns out by knowing the power series representation of f of x, we can also obtain power series representations of f prime of x. Here it is. And furthermore, the power series representation of the integral of f. And we also have for free the radii of convergence of these two uh, power series. Um, I should maybe make it explicit that um, their intervals of convergence will be the intervals of convergence of the series we obtained right here in uh, 1 and 2 are again the interval from a minus r to a plus r but this is only up to the endpoints so what this is saying is that the new intervals of convergence are again a minus r to a plus r and perhaps the endpoints but at least we're guaranteed to have a minus r to a plus r The correct way to think about this theorem is not that you should memorize these formulas, but rather that if you start with a power series that represents some function, right? So think of this line right here. Then 
to compute the derivative of f of x or its integral, what you have to do is to integrate the power series term by term. And that will give you the correct formulas for the derivative and integral of this function f. Let us illustrate the above theorem by an example. So this would be uh, example four. Let us express the function one over one minus x squared as a power series. So recall that we already know how to represent the function one over one minus x, right? This was the sum of this geometric series x to the power k. And so this is something that we already know. How are we going to use this to express this new function as a power series? Well, since we now know how to integrate and differentiate things, what we can do is to say that, well, this new function, uh, let us call it, say, g of x, and the previous function will be called, say, f of x. So what is the relation between these two functions? Well, if you compute the derivative of f of x using the chain rule, so this is the uh, composition of 1 minus x to the power of minus 1, right? So it's 1 minus x to the power minus 1, and that is what we are differentiating. So using chain rule, its derivative ends up being minus 1, 1 minus x to the power minus 2 times minus 1. So this minus 1 here comes from differentiating the inner linear function. And so in other words, this is simply 1 minus x to the power minus 2. And this is precisely what g of x is. Right? So the relation between these two functions is such that derivative of f is precisely g. How is this useful? Well, we know how to represent f of x right here as a power series. And by the previous theorem, we know that this gives us also the representation of f prime x as a power series. But since g of x is precisely f prime x, we are done once we use this property. So g of x is precisely f prime of x, and this function can be represented as the power series by differentiating the power series for f term by term. So we take the power series for f and differentiate it. And by the previous theorem, we know that we can do this term by term. So this will be sum k from 0 to infinity. And now we differentiate each of these powers of x. So the derivative of x to the k is, of course, k times x to the k minus 1. This is just a power function. Mm, OK, so let me try get that um, power right. So that is k minus 1. Great. And this is the power series representation for my g of x. Um, I can even determine when this power series is convergent. So we know the radius of convergence 
is preserved under differentiation. So the new series k from 0 to infinity k times x to the power k minus 1 converges on 0 oops on 0 minus 1, 0 plus 1, right? Since 1 is the radius of convergence, 0 is the center of the series, it must converge on this interval. Um, note that I'm not saying anything about the endpoints. So this is not saying anything. about the convergence at plus minus one. So I leave this as an exercise for you. So exercise does the series converge at plus minus one? Let us go back and think about what we did here. So we were told to express this function g of x as a power series. We related it to the function that we already knew how to express in terms of power series, f of x, by observing that g of x is in fact nothing but the derivative of f of x. And then using the theorem that we discussed previously, we obtained the power series for g of x by differentiating the power series for f of x term by term. 